guys, how are you doing? I'm Jocelyn Samuel Lucena, also known as Teacher Jossie. I'm here to guide you for today's lesson. Our lesson today is calculating the Pearson sample correlation coefficient. For our objectives, after going through this lesson, you are expected to define Pearson sample correlation coefficient R, state or write the formula for Pearson sample correlation coefficient R, compute the Pearson sample correlation coefficient R, and apply and solve real-life problems using Pearson sample correlation coefficient. What is the Pearson's correlation coefficient R? The Pearson sample correlation coefficient, also known as Pearson R, or denoted simply by R, is a test statistic that measures the strength of the linear relationship between two variables. The correlation coefficient R is a number between negative 1 and 1. In symbol, we write negative 1 is less than or equal to R or less than or equal to 1. This means that the values we compute for R is only between negative 1 and 1. For example, if you have computed R equals 2, most probably your answer is wrong. The Pearson R describes both the strength and the direction of correlation. Strength, for example, the closer your value to 1 or negative 1, the stronger the relationship. And for the direction of correlation, we have the negative correlation and the positive correlation. If R is positive, there is a positive correlation. This means as one variable increases, the other variable also increases. And as one variable decreases, the other variable also decreases. That is for the positive correlation. Now, if R is negative, we have a negative correlation. This means one variable increases, the other variable decreases. And if one variable decreases, the other variable increases. This is also known as inverse correlation. And if R is zero, there is no correlation. This means that the variables do not affect one another. The Pearson R formula is given by this. Now, before we read this, we will try to identify all the symbols. Okay, first we have and here, the number of pairs of cases. And then this symbol, which is the summation symbol. We have the summation of xy. And then we have the summation of x here. And then the summation of y, summation of x squared here. And then the summation of y squared. Okay, we read the formula as r is equal to n times the summation of xy minus the product of summation of x and summation of y all over the square root of the product of n times the summation of x squared minus the square of summation of x and n times the summation of y squared minus the square of the summation of y. This formula looks very complicated, but I assure you as you go through this step by step, we will be able to solve the Pearson R. Okay, so let's look at this example. Teachers of Pagasa National High School instilled among their students the value of time management and excellence in everything they do. The table below shows the time in hours spent in studying, that's represented by X, by six grade 11 students and their scores in a test, which is represented by Y. 
Our task is to solve for the Pearson sample correlation coefficient r. Okay, so we have here the table. X represents the number of hours the students spend in studying and Y here represents the score of the students. Now, let, we, let us answer this step by step. So, let's look at step one. We will construct the table as shown on the right. So, here is the table and you notice that we have written the data in columns. We have the, datas for, the data for X under this column and then the data for Y written in this column. Second is, we complete the table. For the x, y column here, we multiply entries in the x and y column. So we have there, 1 times 5, you have there 5. 2 times 10, you have there 20. 3 times 10, we have there 30. 4 times 15, 60. 5 times 25, that's 125, and 6 times 30, that's 180. Now, let's go to the next column. For x squared column, we square the entries in the x column. So, this is the x column here. Now, we will answer. 1 squared or 1 times 1 is 1 there. 2 squared is 2 times 2, 4. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 4, you have 16. 5 times 5, 25. And 6 times 6, 36. And then for the last column, we will square all the entries in the Y column. So we will square the entries here. We will multiply the entries to, it, to itself. So there you go, 5 squared or 5 times 5, you have there 25, 10 squared, that is 100, 10 squared, 100, 15 squared is 225, 25 squared, that is 625, and 30 squared, that is 900. And then for the step 3, we get the sum which is the summation okay, that we have a while ago. We get the sum of the entries per column. So we have there the summation of x, summation of y, summation of xy, summation of x squared, and summation of y squared. So we add 1, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. That gives you 21. And then for the next column, you have 5 plus 10 plus 10 plus 15 plus 25 plus 30. You have 95. And then for the XY column, the summation of XY, we have 5 plus 20 plus 30 plus 60 plus 125 plus 180. You will have 420. And then we proceed to the X squared column. We have 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 plus 36. That gives you 91. And for the last column, we have 25 plus 100 plus 100 plus 225 plus 625 plus 900. That gives you 1,975. Okay. Note that there are six pairs in the data. You have here the first pair, the second pair, the third pair, fourth pair, five and six pairs. So you have n is equal to six. Values obtained from step three in the formula for R and solve for R using your calculator. So advanced information, you will be needing your calculator for this uh, solutions. And we recall that we will have these values. N is equal to 6. Summation of X equals 21. Summation of Y equals 95. Summation of XY is 420. Summation of X squared, 91. And summation of Y squared, that's 1,975. And we will also have to recall the formula. This is it. 
and we will now be we will now do our solution so first we have to substitute the values in the formula so we have it here uh, n is 6 okay summation of x y is 420 there you go summation of x is 21 here summation of y is 95 okay and then and here 6 summation of x squared you have there 91 and then summation of x is 21 and we square it and then again n is 6 summation of y squared is 1975 and summation of y which is 95 and we square that value okay so now we multiply 6 6 times 420 that is 2520 minus 21 times 95 we have 1995 and then the denominator for the denominator 6 times 91 that's 546 21 squared is 441 6 times 9, 1,975 is 11,850. And we have 95 squared, that is 9025 or 9025. We subtract 2520 minus 1,995, you have 525. And in the denominator, we have 546 minus 441, we have 105. 1, no, 11,850 minus 9,025, you have 2,875. The next step, we multiply the denominator, we have 525, sorry, over the square root of 105 times 2825 this is 296625 and then we take the square root of this denominator then later on we divide 525 divided by the square root of 296625 you have the final answer 0 0.96 395 now we have to take note that our r should be rounded off into two decimal places therefore we have r is equal to 0 0.96 so for our conclusion the value of r here is positive Therefore, we can say accurately that there is a positive correlation between hours spent in studying and the student's score in a test. In other words, as the number of hours spent in studying increases, the student's scores also increases. That one is a positive correlation. So there you go guys, I hope you learned something today. I know this lesson is quite long and a bit tedious, but you, as you practice, as you watch it again and you practice, you will get the hang of it soon. So here's my reminder, enjoy and endure dear students. Later on, you will reap the fruit of your labor. God bless you. This video lesson is based on the Department of Education Senior High School module for Statistics and Probability, printed by the Department of Education, Region 4A, Calabarzon.